Hey, guess what's happening on this week's episode of the Beating Diabetes Lifestyle Podcast with your friend and host, Oscar Camejo. Hey, welcome to this week's episode of the Beating Diabetes Lifestyle Podcast with me, your host, Oscar Camejo. The whole purpose behind this podcast is to do one thing, and that is to help diabetics make lifestyle changes to reverse type 2 diabetes. That's what it's all about, folks. So in today's episode, we got a really good one. I mean, it's so good. This topic is near and dear to my heart. I love men's issues, men's health issues, relationship issues. And because it's June and it's Men's Health Month, this topic is something that's very important that we really need to take seriously and enjoy. We're going to have a lot of fun. So I got a message to the men and I got a message to the ladies. So definitely stick around. So here is today's topic. The top reasons why some men neglect their health and the message to the women who love them. It's going to be a good one. So what can you expect to get out of this week's episode? We're going to discuss the difference between myth and reality when it comes to men and their health concerns. We're also going to talk about recommendations for how men can jumpstart their journey toward good health and have success in it. And lastly, encouragement for women who are struggling to get the men in their lives to take their health seriously. I mean, for your boyfriends, your husbands, your uncles, your dads, you know, those important men in your life that you really care about and you want them to really take their health seriously. Stick around. I got something for you, too. All right. Diabetes does not have to win. Diabetes does not have to win. Welcome to the Beating Diabetes Lifestyle Podcast with me, your host, Oscar Camejo. Like I said in the introduction, this is going to be a great one. It's a hot topic. Listen, there's a problem. We all know health is on the top of a lot of people's minds. But sometimes people may wonder like, okay, is it really that serious? Do men really not care about you know, their health and what's going on with them. You have one camp that believes that, hey, men could care less about their health. They wait till something bad happens before they go to the doctor and so forth. So there's that one camp. Then there's the other camp that says, oh, no, men are really extreme when it comes to their health. They do care about their health. I mean, you can't go anywhere without seeing guys just, you know, out there jogging on the streets or doing extreme uh, uh, sports and health related things. They're in the gym lifting a thousand pounds, you know? So, I mean, there's two camps, right? And there may be a third camp, people who are like in the middle who are like, mm, my health is okay. You know, mm, I don't exercise, but you know, you know, I do care about my health. So, you know, I may go to the doctor once in a while. Some of y'all may come up with a fourth camp, but in any case, so, Let's talk about this. Is a reality. Men actually should care more about their bodies than they do. Let's be honest. There are some men who are not knowledgeable about their bodies. They really don't tend to focus on what's going on in their bodies until something happens. I mean, that that's a reality. That's the truth. I mean, it, it happens, all right? You know... Men should be more proactive when it comes to knowing what's going on in their bodies. Now, I, I want to say something here. So sometimes, you know, there's this comparison between what men do with their health and what women do concerning their health. But listen, our bodies are different. We are physiologically and metabolically made differently, right? We have different body parts and different body parts require different uh things and they operate differently. We have some things in common, but we have other things that are not common. So that's why there are women's issues and there are men's issues related to health. So it's a myth to think that, okay, men don't care about their health. It's a myth to think that women don't care about their health or they care about their health more than men. I mean, you can't take isolated situations and make it like a blanket situation. But you know what? 
still you have people who have strong opinions. You know, I get it. Let, let, let's talk about this for a second. Let's talk about nurture, upbringing. Women, when they're young, they are, and, and I don't want to generalize this, but I mean, ladies, you can chime in, you know, leave a comment, rate the show. I do want you all to rate the show, write in, let me know if I'm right or wrong. But from a lady's perspective, women are taught from a young age to really be attuned to their bodies, you know, to be attuned to their body parts. When they are young, they, they younger, they're from adolescence on, they are more conscious of their bodies. And then they go to the mom, takes them to the doctor often because there's, and as they grow up to be teenagers and young women, there's certain things that go on in the female body that warrants going to the doctor or being more attuned to what's going on physically. Guys, when we, you know, I'm a guy, clearly, you know, we fall and if we break an arm or break a bone or get scraped, you know, then we may go to the doctor. You know what I'm saying? I remember, I think the first time I even remember going to the doctor was getting in the car. I, was, I probably was like 10 years old or something like that. And me and my dad was getting in the car. We went to the grocery store or something. So I get in and I used to have a tendency of leaving my foot in the door, right? For some reason, it was just weird. And I slammed my foot, my right foot in the door. And so my dad took me to the doctor, but that was because of something that happened. And they checked, it wasn't broken, my toes weren't broken or anything. So guess what happened? Out leaving out of the doctor's office, we get in the car. Guess what I did again? <laughs> that same day, right after leaving the doctor's office, I slammed my foot again in the door. I know my dad was probably frustrated. <laughs> I don't remember anything else from that. I do remember the smell of iodine. But my point is, guys at a young age, we go to the doctor or the hospital usually when something is wrong or, you know, I mean, it's kind of like conditioning. It, it happens. So, you know, don't blame us. That's just how it is. So my point is there is the myth and then there's the reality when it comes to men's health and men's concern. And I want to argue that men actually do care about their health. We may go about it differently. We may approach it differently than women. Now here, let's talk about the impact of when men neglect their health. And if they do it long enough over a long period of time, or they wait for something bad to happen. Now that is a reality. You have some guys who, you know, for whatever reason, they don't go until something bad happens until, oh man, I don't feel good. And so now there, it's a reaction that, uh, versus being a proactive response uh, or a lifestyle of going to the doctor, getting checked and so forth. So here's the reality. When you wait to go to the doctor or you keep putting things off, and this is to the fellas, right? Ladies, you can hang tight for a second. You know, you the reality is you miss early signs of when something's going wrong. You know, that little ache you feel, you may, ah, you know what, I, I'll deal with it later. You know, you put it off. But there may be an underlying problem that has occurred or is occurring and getting worse and you're not dealing with it. So when you go long enough with that, you run the risk of dealing with other issues, other problems. I mean, you're talking about heart disease, the risk of heart attacks, uh, obesity, gaining weight. And it seems like, man, I just gained this weight overnight. I mean, that's a, a risk. Then that obesity may in some cases lead to type two diabetes and insulin resistance, you know, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, uh, even cancers and other uh, chronic issues, inflammation, you name it. There's a whole bunch of things that if go untreated, will make matters worse. And then you end up, you know, getting rushed to the hospital because something happened. You know what I mean? 
And so that is the reality that that happens in a lot of cases. You know, I have a friend of mine who, um, you know, he actually died at the hospital. We didn't know anything was wrong with him. I don't think uh, his family knew anything was wrong with him. And he had diabetes and there was diabetes complications and gets to the hospital and all of a sudden he's gone. So I don't want this to be a morbid situation or morbid um, episode, but it's a reality, folks. When we put things off long enough, things can get worse. And if I, if you're like most guys, guys, you're listening to this, you want to live, you know, you actually want to live a long life. You know, nobody sets out to just say, you know what, I'm just going to just live this poor lifestyle and you know, I just want to die of heart disease and heart attack and high blood, you know, pressure and all this other stuff. I don't think you really set that out, set out to let that be your story and your situation. So let's get rid of the myths and deal with the reality. The reality is one of the leading causes for men's um, morbidity and, and death is heart attack, is heart failure. So we need to take our heart health very important. So we're gonna take a quick break and we'll be right back. Be sure to visit the website at www.beatingdiabeteslifestyle.com for access to free resources and other information that will help you along your journey. If you would like to submit a question or a comment about the show or to learn more about the Beating Diabetes Lifestyle, you can always email me at hello at beatingdiabeteslifestyle.com. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to this podcast. All right, we're back. So we've been talking about the problems and the reality versus myth. And we talked about the impact that certain things have on our health as men when we don't take things seriously. Listen, I know that you probably have some friends, some of your close friends that have passed away. We all do because of complications, because of issues that have happened, maybe not even passed away, but just are dealing with some really tough issues. Guys, you may be dealing with some issues that, you know what, you've been putting off for a while, putting off for a while, for whatever reason. So I want to go into uh, some reasons why um, some men really don't take their health that serious. But before we get into that, I want to share some comments from followers. You know, the other day I actually put out a post on social media asking a simple question. Do men really not take their health seriously enough until something bad happens? I mean, I had people from all over the place chiming in, writing in, leaving comments and so forth. So I want to read a few to you. So this one came from Dylan. He said, I think that's definitely true. Guys will change the oil in their car early, but when it comes to their bodies, They'll try and drive through problems when the check engine light comes on and it's been on for miles. Thank you, Dylan. Here's one from Alora. 100% they don't. My one brother is the exception. My other brother makes the issue. Or no, or she says, my other brother has stomach issues and knowingly consumes food that makes the issues worse. My dad refuses to accept one diagnosis and believes nothing is wrong. He would never treat a car like that, though. Okay. Now, here's from Fonz. Fonz says, not for me. I'm in the doctor's office three to four times a year checking on my blood, and I eat accordingly. I also detox regularly, and I don't drink and smoke like I used to. I just need to be consistent with the workouts and I'll be great. Thank you. I, li I like those comments. I like, you know, when folks chime in and send me messages and so forth. So let's dive head deep into this topic of why some men don't take their health seriously enough until something bad happens. You know, I know some men neglect their health, but there's a reason why. Ladies, listen, okay, don't tune this part out. This is very important. 
to help you get into the psychology of men to understand that it's going to help you too when it comes time to help you, the men in your lives. Okay, so my goal when I go through this list is to bring awareness to an issue, to bring awareness to this problem, and to provide some common sense insight and my recommendations on how to deal with these problems. So number one, men may not think it's necessary to take their health seriously until something happens. You know, going to see the doctor, I'll go when it's necessary. Number two, out of fear. Number three, not wanting to look weak and vulnerable. That one's big. Number four, a lack of adequate support from loved ones. Ooh, that one's big too. Number five, men get too busy taking care of everyone else and they neglect themselves. So it's not that men don't care, but they may get so busy providing, loving on everybody else, providing and protecting everybody else, and they forget to love on themselves. Number six, pride. It's like that warrior on the battlefield. You've seen those warrior movies? <laughs> Those warrior movies, man, you have the Brave Hearts, you have Gladiator, you have 300. Oh, 300 is another one. That one's a bloody movie. I love it. You know, he charges out the, the protagonist. He charges and he faces danger. And then he gets sliced with a sword and he looks and he's bleeding and he's like, ah, but he keeps fighting. <laughs> You know, he could have a limb cut off and he's still fighting. He gets his right arm cut off, but he has learned how to wield a sword with his left hand. And he's 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 battle minded. <laughs> you know, or the guy who, you know, uh, is in the war, they're shooting at him and he's charging towards the bullets. He sees a grenade on the floor. He reaches down, he picks it up and he throws it or he jumps on the mine. Or, or, or the the uh, grenade to protect his brothers, the band of brothers, right? We charge into the fight. We don't run from it. You know, that's that warrior mentality. But the reality is when it comes to health and the unseen battle that's happening within the body, that pride needs to be put away, guys, because you're not in 300. You're not Braveheart. You're not William Wallace. Give us all freedom. Or is it, you, you may take our lives, but you cannot take our freedom. <laughs> Guys, come on. We want to live, right? <laughs> Stop playing. Number seven, lack of adequate insurance, health insurance. So it's like, hey, if I don't have insurance, I'll just go to the doctor when I need to. That's a reality. So again, that was just a few reasons why some men do neglect their health. But I want, I want to reemphasize this. As I shared some of the comments and, and when we dealt with the myths and reality, I believe guys do take their health seriously enough. It's just the action of taking steps to uh, take our health seriously enough. You know, we may not really see the necessity of it, but the, there is a necessity for us to have ongoing health checkups, keeping our finger on the pulse of what's happening with our bodies. You know, fellas, let's 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 talk about this for a moment. Okay, so I'm going to give you some recommendations and some solutions. So, these are 10 practical steps that I'm going to offer. Remember, these are not necessarily step 1, 2 and follow in this order. These are things, think of it more like a checklist. My recommended checklist for you to get yourself on the road to recovery, to jumpstart your good health. Because guys, let's be honest, I think we do care about, you know, how we look and how we feel. You know, we walk by the mirror, we look at the mirror, we step on the scale too. When the door closes and we're in the bathroom by ourselves, we look, you know, we have thoughts that are going on in our heads about what's going on. So let me get right into it. Here are my recommendations and 10 practical steps. For men, number one, men, I want you to take the lead and start your health journey now. Very simple. Don't wait till, you know, summer break is over to get things done. 
you know, to take it seriously. I want you to take the lead now. That comes in different forms and different fashions. But the bottom line is I want you to set the example for your family. If you have sons, set the example for your sons. If your your spouse, your girlfriend, your wives, they're, they're the ones who are taking the kids to the doctor's office. I want you to take the lead and start going to the doctor as well. For yourself, not just when Johnny gets a cold and, you know, Susie is going through her situations and allergic or allergic reaction and you let your wife just go, you know, or the mom just go to the hospital. I want you to take an active role in your health. I want you to start. Start today. Take the lead to show love towards yourself and your body. Number two, I want you to schedule a time to meet with your primary care physician so you can determine what's going on with your body. Go ahead and schedule it. Don't just wait for an annual physical. Maybe you do an annual physical, but I want you to go beyond the the physical. I want you to make it a regular habit. You may find out that, hey, you need to go see the doctor more often than just once a year. The point is, schedule that with your primary care physician. So here's some specific recommendations concerning when you go to your doctor and you need to get some screenings. Here's some screenings that I definitely recommend you do. Get your prostate check. Check for your cholesterol. That's very important. You know, make sure there's, see what's going on with the uh, cholesterol levels because, you know, high cholesterol is not good for the heart, guys. Uh, Check on your insulin resistance and diabetes. Check for diabetes. Maybe you already know if you have prediabetes or you have type 2 diabetes, but you definitely want to get a, uh, get your blood work done to check your blood sugar to see where you are. And ask specifically for an insulin screening because you want to know how your body's actually processing the insulin. It's one thing to know where your A1C is. That's your um, glucose levels and glucose absorption levels in your bodies. It's one thing to know how your body is handling the sugar, but you want to know exactly what's happening with your insulin and where you are with your insulin resistance. So definitely make sure you get that done. Also, you want to check for cancer, you know, uh, lung cancers, prostate cancers. Uh, You want to check for just cancers, you know, whether it runs in your family or not. That's very important. You want to be able to capture things early and know things early so you can treat it. Also, you want to get your testosterone checked because guess what, guys, you know, when you start uh, gaining a lot of weight and you get to that state of being obese, Things affect your libido, your testosterone level, your sex drive, and just other things. So that's very important. Make sure you get your testosterone checked. And you may be dealing with a situation where, yeah, you may not feel like being, what they say, getting busy. And it could be related to what's going on in your body. You know, there's erectile dysfunction issues. You know, there could be certain foods that you're eating that could be negatively impacting your your sex drive. Number three, I also want you to get plugged in to seeing a registered dietitian and a nutritionist because that, you know, food is very important. What we put in our bodies is just as important as what we do with our bodies in terms of physical exercise. Number four, I want you to start eating healthier foods common sense. It's practical. And, you know, when you start hooking up with a registered dietitian and nutritionist, they're going to help you to develop a plan that works for you. So keep that in mind. So uh, let's see here. Now, when it comes to eating healthier foods, I want you to practice um, portion control. So this should be number five. Yeah, number five. I want you to practice portion control. Stop eating all that food. You don't have to load your food with, um, load your plate rather, with a whole bunch of food. I want you to practice portion control. You don't have to eat as much as you used to, especially if you're trying to lose weight and become healthier. So number six, 
I want you to start choosing foods that are rich in nutrients, such as fruits, vegetables, legumes, you know, beans and lentils. I want you to choose and start eating more seeds and nuts like almonds, pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds. There's a whole list of them. I want you to start eating lean sources of protein like chicken, salmon, you know, certain fish that are high in protein, you know, high in um, good nutrients that has good, healthy fats. And that's going to be good for your heart. Next, I want you to limit refined carbohydrates and starches from your diet. I'm talking about breads, the white rice, the white breads, the potatoes, even sweet potatoes, French fries, and pastas, and so forth. Now, I want you to also start incorporating healthy fats like avocados, avocado oil, olive oil, various seeds and nuts. It's very, very easy to make that transition. Now, I'm not talking about it's easy to just make a switch, but the things that you can start putting in your body, making the decisions to buy things, that is not as difficult as we make it. It's not as complicated as we make it. At least it shouldn't be. Uh, the next thing, the next recommendation is eliminate alcohol and sugary drinks from your diets. I'm talking about sodas, your fruit juices, your coffees that are laced with a bunch of uh, sugar and these artificial sweeteners, um, your energy drinks. You know, some guys, you may be on the road a lot and you're tired and you're just so used to taking these energy drinks and you're not realizing the impact, the sugar impact that it's having on your body. Your blood sugar is going up and down, up and down, and you have all these cravings. It could be because of the things that you're drinking. You know, that uh, those sugar, sugary drinks, they hit the blood stream really quickly and they cause a big spike. I have an entire episode that's called Sugar Daddy that I want you guys to tune into if you haven't already. And lastly, I want you to exercise daily. That Does that mean going to the gym every day? Not necessarily. That may not be a part of your lifestyle. It may not be conducive, but I want you to do some type, some form of exercise, whether you're at home, whether you're walking out in your neighborhood, but you want to do at least 30 minutes of physical exercise and stop making this joke about why well, I am exercising when I'm sitting on the couch and I'm changing the channel. That doesn't count, guys. I'm talking about actually getting up and doing 30 minutes of exercise on a regular basis. So those are my recommendations, some practical steps, 10 of those. Um, take those to heart. They uh, are going to help change your life. Ladies, I told you I was going to have something for you too. So this is very important. So this is a message to the women who love their men and want to see their men live a healthy lifestyle. Now, listen, ladies, I get it. I know you've probably been, you know, struggling with, you know, helping your guy to take his health seriously. And you're like, come on, John. You need to go to the doctor. You need to go do this. You need to go do that. You need to go now. And you've probably laid down the gauntlet. <laughs> and you probably was like, hey, you better go or or else. And, you know, you're given the ultimatums and then he feels forced to go. So then he goes, right? You know, or you may have some older sons that have some health complications and you see it. And you're like, man, I don't want, I don't want Eric to get upset with me. I don't want you know, build to, you know, be angry with me. So I'm just going to leave him alone, you know? And that's one of the worst things that you can do, ladies, is just say, hey, I'm just going to leave it alone. That's not the attitude that I want you as wives, sisters, aunts to take, you know, girlfriends. Come on now. You know, women, you all have a certain level of influence and power, <laughs> that I want you to use, but I want you to use it in a constructive way. So ladies, I'm a guy. I've been a guy for 49 years. I know men. I know how men think. So listen to me. Sis, you ready? You got your pen and pad out? Listen to what I'm saying. 
and don't come up with, you know, yeah, but I tried that. I tried that. No, this is me. I'm your friend. I'm your brother. So here, hear my recommendations on what to do. Because men have internal dialogue that goes on in their head, men do care about their health. Men do care about the size that they put on. They may not tell you because they don't want to look weak and vulnerable. They don't want to look like, you know, something's going on. Remember, we dealt with that already. So I want you to think like a man for a little bit, for a second. And I want you to approach it from that perspective. So the bottom line is, number one, actually talk to the men in your life. You know, the other day I got a call from a very good friend. She was like, hey, you know, it's Men's Health Month and I'm just hadn't talked to you for a while. Just want to make sure that you're okay. You know, I see you're doing some, you know, you're taking care of yourself physically, but I want to make sure that you're emotionally okay and you're mentally okay, how are things going and so forth. So the, I really appreciated that. I mean, that phone call came unexpectedly. So number one, ladies, talk to the men in your life. And we're going to talk about how do you talk to them. Don't assume that it's best to just leave guys alone. Because you know what? Hey, you know what? He's stubborn. He's not going to listen. Dad is not going to listen. He's just going to keep doing whatever he's doing. I think guys, for the most part, they want you to show that concern. Because ladies, you know, you have that innate nurturing and caring and loving um, aspect and characteristics. So I want you to use that you know, to really approach the conversation differently. You know, ladies, when you uh, are ready to approach that conversation, I want you to actually communicate your concern, but there's a way how you do it. Stop being rough with your guy. Stop being rough with your brothers. Stop being rough, you know, and feel like, oh, well, you know, because he, they're tough. I, I got to just talk to him, you know, and really sink it in, you know, for the most part, some guys, we don't need that. But we want, you know, that to know that you're actually concerned about our health as well, but the way how you communicate. So communicate, don't dictate what needs to happen. So communicate, don't dictate what your concerns are. Don't give ultimatums. Don't throw down the gauntlet. Don't do that. That, that, that does not help. Avoid talking down to the men in your life. Don't make them feel like children. Your husband, your brother, they're, you know, your cousins, your dad, they're not your children. Yeah, but they act like kids. You know, they're so playful. Okay, we're talking about health now. So don't talk down to the men in your life. You know, talk to them, talk with them. Don't talk at them. You know, one of the worst things that some women do, you know, they tease their, their, their loved one. Oh, you really going to eat that much bread? Oh, you really? Hey, big boy, you really going to um, eat that pork sandwich? <laughs> you know you shouldn't be eating all that, that uh, uh, bacon. You're going to eat all those eggs? You already fat is enough. Come on. You know, they say sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Guys get hurt by words. <laughs> Ladies, <laughs> we do. So stop playing with your words. Again, avoid talking down. Don't tease. Teasing is not fun. I know y'all may have this banter, you know, that y'all normally do, but I want you to shift gears when it comes to health, right? You know, let's try this. You know, next time it's a quiet evening, quiet afternoon with your spouse. You know, it may be after dinner or it could be on a Saturday when y'all get up. Just say, hey, honey, I want to talk to you. Now, when you say, hey, I want to talk to you, guys are going to be like, Oh, dang. Hey, I got to go fix the car. I got to go change the oil because they're thinking something different. But, you know, ladies, put that loving hand, rub guys on the back. You know, we like to be rubbed on the back of our neck. You know, we're talking about spouses now, or boyfriends, right? Just, you know, girlfriends or boyfriends. So, you know, there's a soothing way that you can, you know, lower your voice. Hey, Steve, I just wanted to talk to you. You know, I've really been thinking about you a lot. Your health is very important to me. You know, the kids, we want you around. I want you around, you know, and I've just been thinking about your health lately. And, you know, you mean the world to me. You got, ladies, you know how to pour it on. You know how to use that soothing voice. 
you know, guys may be thinking, oh, something else is about to happen. But no, we're not talking about anything physical like that. Like, you know, just approach the conversation differently. You got to approach it delicately sometimes. You know, some guys, you may not even have to do that, but there are some guys who they just need that. They need to hear the concern in your voice. So lower your voice, talk soothingly, you know, hold their hand. Rub the hand, rub the arm, rub the shoulders, you know, and have that conversation. You know, the approach is very important. You know, I want you to demonstrate your support in a loving way that goes back to not just the conversations, but it's one thing to say, hey, I care about your health and I care about your your life. And it's one thing to demonstrate that support, but do it in a loving way. You know, harsh words. Tough words, I mean, they cut like knives. So be more loving, be more nurturing, be more caring. Use your superpowers, ladies. I want you to take an active role in your husband's health, like you do your children's. You know, wives, moms, you'll be quick. Okay, such and such has allergies, such and such, this went on, or they have a sniffle, and you're on it. You're on it. You're you're you go into mommy mode and you go into fix it mode and so forth. But sometimes I want you to examine how much care and concern and support are you showing your man when he's sick? Are you of that mentality like, oh well, he's a man, he can suck it up, he'll be all right. You know, he's you know, he he'll he'll trudge through it, you know, he'll get rest when he needs to. Oh, I've been telling him that he needs to get rest. You know, he's just not listening. So you just kind of just leave it. You don't do that with your kids. When you know your kids need to get rest or you know they need to eat better, you do something about it. You take a proactive role in supporting your kids' health. But somewhere along the, the, the way, maybe you have shifted your focus away from your man, you know, or even your older sons. Maybe you kind of just or your brothers, and you just shifted your focus away. And maybe you ladies, you're focusing on your health, right? You're focusing on making sure that you're good, that you're fine, that everything is okay with you, but then you neglect that guy. And I'll be honest, guys feel it. Fellas, I'm pretty sure you know what I'm talking about. We feel it when our wives, when our when our female loved ones have pulled away from us. You know, and that is a gut wrenching feeling. You know, I was re- I was reluctant to kind of go into a personal story of how I felt like that. But when I was diagnosed with type two diabetes in August 2020 and, you know, I was married at the time. You know, I, I talk about this in episode two, the walrus in the ring. You know, I had a very negative perception of myself at the time. You know, I had gotten up to 268 pounds and I just really felt like, man, what's happening with my body? How did this happen? And I didn't feel the support at the time that I thought that I needed. Let's just say it like that. And I don't want to speak negatively of anybody. This is just what I was feeling in my head at the time. And Going through that situation, being in the hospital alone, feeling isolated from the world, not knowing if I was going to come out of the hospital alive. You know, this was during the pandemic too, the height of the pandemic. And I wasn't in there because of the pandemic. I was in there because, you know, I had an episode regarding type 2 diabetes and I learned about type 2 diabetes, me having it in the hospital and coming out of the hospital I felt alone, even though I wasn't physically alone. It was just, it was a tough situation. And things didn't get better relationship-wise. You know, when you think about uh, uh, husbands and wives, when they say their vows, you know, when you all have said your vows, you know, there's probably a part in there that said, you know, for sickness, or in sickness and in health you know, till death do us part and all that. So we make that commitment at the altar. But when the stuff hits the fan and sickness is there, you know, it's like, whoa. So uh, ladies, we do need your support. We do need you. Don't give up on us. Some of us, you know, I had the drive to change my life 
whether I was with somebody or not, and I turned my life around. But there are some guys who don't recover. They don't turn their lives around. You know, things just go from bad to worse, you know, when they don't have that support. So I just want you to take an active role uh, where that's concerned. Now, I want you to start cooking healthier. Ladies, if you're the ones that uh, are the ones that do most of the cooking, I want you to take the lead in terms of cooking healthier, shopping for better foods, healthier foods, looking up better options. Yeah, he may like the pastas and the pizza, pizzas and stuff like that, but you can take an active role in making better options, choosing better options. I want you to suggest eating out less. If you all have a tendency of eating out all the time, you know, both of you all can come into agreement and start eating out less, especially if you have kids that's going to benefit your kids. You know, um, there's a rise in obese kids, you know, unhealthy kids. Let's get our, let's at least give our kids, our sons and our daughters a fighting chance without neglecting our spouse as well. So, um, I want you to consider making homemade salad dressings and homemade salsas and pizza sauces and pasta sauces, you know, because a lot of the stuff that you buy from the store is full of sugar, a whole bunch of sodium, but there's nothing like making your own. I make my own homemade salad dressings to go on my homemade salads. I did a whole video on that on TikTok and people love it. I mean, it went viral. Check it out on TikTok. So I'm about to wrap this up, folks. Uh, the bottom line is I want to encourage men and women to take your health seriously, not just because it's Men's Health Month, because, you know, after June, then what happens? Don't wait till October when it's Breast Cancer Month to create an awareness around that for women's issues. We should be concerned and focus on health every day. One of the things I tell people is I want to help people to live focused, to live fit, so they can feel alive every day of their lives. I turn my life around. I feel so great. I feel so energized now. I'm 49 at the time of this recording. I started my health journey when I was like 47, 48, roughly. And I feel great. People look at me in the gym, this guy the other day, and I don't know if he was just being, you know, just being nice or whatnot. He was like, man, you look 30 something. I was like, no, dude, I'm 49. I was like, man, I thought you were my age. And I've heard that from several people. I, I get people coming up to me in the gym asking me if I'm a fitness instructor, instructor, you know, could I help them? you know, on their journey. I've been watching you for a while. You don't wear a knee brace anymore. And, you know, I see how you move in the gym. And I am grateful to God. You know, faith is very important in my life. You know, I trust God. I want to leave you all with this focus point for this week. It's something that I want you to uh, keep in mind as you go on for the rest of this week and into next week, and you're deciding to jumpstart your health. This is for men and women. Okay, so this is this week's focus point. The appropriate response to fear is to lean into it and not run from it. Health-related issues may come, but they don't have to overcome. Choose today to take control of your life and live. So if you enjoyed this episode today, I want you to leave a comment. I want you to rate the show. Rating the show actually helps boost uh, the viewership of the show. It helps people to know more about the show and tell somebody about this show and the beating diabetes lifestyle. You know, we have a podcast, not just a podcast. We have a website and other things, you know, so I really appreciate you all. So listen, as always, stay focused, keep moving, never go back, leap forward, bounce back because you can. And above all else, trust God. You got this. I believe in you. Hi, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to the Beating Diabetes Lifestyle Podcast with Oscar Camejo. We hope you enjoyed this episode. As a reminder, this podcast is intended for motivational and educational purposes only. It is not a substitute for professional care by a physician or other healthcare professional or qualified fitness instructor. 
This podcast is provided on the understanding that it does not constitute medical or professional advice or services. If you're looking for help on your journey, seek a qualified medical practitioner. It's important that you utilize someone who is a trained, licensed healthcare professional who can help you on your journey toward good health.